Welcome to the Art of Procurement, the official podcast of the Catalyst Co. community. And our purpose is to enhance the impact of procurement by elevating the discussion one conversation at a time. Here at Art of Procurement, Catalysts come together every single week to share their challenges, ideas, successes and perspectives on the business of procurement. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to today's Art of Procurement podcast. I'm Philip Heitzen, and today is the last podcast of 2018. I can't believe it's, uh, what, December the 16th already that I'm recording this. And given the way that the holidays fall, I'm not just planning on releasing the next interview that we have, and we have a bunch of great interviews already lined up and in the can, but the next one I don't plan on releasing until January the 7th, when we should all be back in the flow of things at the start of the new year. So as we wrap up 2018, I thought I would actually spend a little bit of time today just reflecting on what changed in 2018, maybe a couple of projections on 2019, although I don't want to get too much into the predictions business today. Um, If I was to sum up, though, as I think back to 2018 and, and this year, you know, while a lot has changed, not much has changed. And a couple of years ago, I co-wrote an article. It was at this time of year, and it was with Gordon Donovan. So Gordon, uh, you'll probably recognize him as a frequent past guest on Art of Procurement, where we looked at a bunch of previous reports on, you know, what does the future of procurement look like? And we went all the way back to 2002, and then we compared them to where we were today, or at that time, what was it? It's probably the end of 2016. And so Gordon and I found that all these projection reports, that basically had findings that you could fit into one of four buckets. And remember, this is projections, again, that were being made all the way back in 2002, up to the present time. So the first one was technology is going to set you free. The second one was procurement KPIs are going to change, no more savings. The third one was we need new skill sets to deliver a new value proposition. And the fourth one was always a question, will procurement disappear? And much like a couple of years ago when we wrote that article, I feel that procurement this year is kind of at the same place. And there's been a a number of recent reports the last couple of months, all kind of projecting exactly the same thing as we were looking back at, what, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. So that's not to say that individual procurement organizations haven't grown or expanded their value proposition, because there's a number of procurement organizations that have been very successful in doing that. Um, Others have been very successful year on year in meeting or exceeding a savings target where, you know, they're in an industry where the ability to save money margins are so thin that that truly is the competitive advantage. But when we look at the profession as a whole, it's kind of, um, you know, when one company moves forward, another one moves backwards. And I'd characterize most procurement organizations that I come into contact with here at the end of 2018. They fit into one of four different tiers. So the fourth tier is those that are kind of stuck in the transactional role and perhaps don't really have the desire or the organizational support to challenge the status quo. Then there's the third tier. So those who are investing in building a more strategic function for the same time, you know, they've recognized that in the past they may have had more of a transactional history, but they're really early in a journey of transforming things and, and wanting to become a lot more strategic. So then there's the second tier. So procurement groups who are supporting their organization, I would say generally in a strategic way, but they struggle to do so across their entire business. So to scale what they're good at while minimizing the tactical work. And when I talk about scale, what I really mean is that a lot of organizations have forward-thinking, successful procurement professionals, you know, the high-potential procurement professionals. They have a great relationship with their stakeholder. They're really well integrated into the business. But what's so hard at that second tier is scaling it. So it becomes less dependent on the individuals within the procurement group, and it's more of a result of an organizational infrastructure that is in place. So that's kind of the struggle there. And then the top tier really are those organizations who have got over that struggle. So they're investing heavily in new technologies. They're not afraid to take risks. And they've managed to scale that ability to become a trusted partner. And a result, really across their entire group, the driving business decisions rather than actually taking orders. So those are the four different tiers. What's clear is that that progression isn't linear. So 
for those of you who are familiar with the structure of, uh, as an example here, the English professional football leagues or soccer leagues. So we have promotion and relegation every year where the top teams get promoted uh, to the next level. The worst teams every year drop to the tier below. And so that's kind of what I see in procurement at the moment. You know, for every organization that's evolving positively, you know, going to that next level, there's another one that's taking the opposite route, going in the other direction. What's really great here at Arta Procurement is that our community is full of procurement professionals dedicated to moving to the next level, you know, wherever your baseline is. And if you were not interested in that, then, you know, you wouldn't be investing the time in listening to the show. So that's kind of 2018 where it really is more or less the status quo. What's new in 2019? Well, I think, first of all, technology is continuing to evolve. You know, when I look back, over 2018, there's been a significant amount of M&A in the procurement space. So the largest procurement tech companies, it's allowed them to get bigger and expand their range of capabilities and to the clients and the prospects of these larger firms, the people who are wanting a full suite, well, those full suites are getting stronger and stronger every year as some of those acquisitions are being integrated into the platforms. And so at the other end of the scale, at least in terms of size, we have some niche technology firms that are doing some really interesting things. You know, some of those are starting to explore and implement the procurement applications for RPA and for AI. Others are building, you know, kind of on software or on the capabilities that already exist in the market, but they're building a much better user experience um, with a lot easier implementations, you know, without the need for hundreds of thousands or million dollar implementations. So with that in mind, you know, looking at 2019 from a technology and uh, taking advantage of that evolution of technology, I think the biggest bang for your book remains in three different places. Two are specific based on essentially where you are in that tiering right now. And one is a little bit more general. So first, the specific opportunities. I'd say that for those who are at the start of their procurement transformation journey, um, it's really in robust spend analytics. I still talk to so many companies who have limited visibility into their third-party spend, and yet that's the foundation of so many of the kind of follow-on tactics and strategies that are needed to transform and to do that at scale. And then for those who already have the foundation, The technology that's most interesting to me right now is this idea of guided buying. So guided buying essentially enables a managed but a self-service environment for till and contracted spend. So, you know, you have controls around the spend, but you're enabling stakeholders to make their own decisions. And then as they go through that guided buying process to buy something, then there's a way of actually bringing them in to the sourcing process or to the procurement, kind of connecting them with their procurement contact very early in that process so that the right contact can get involved with them at a much earlier stage in the process where there's actually the need to do some sourcing work or where um, it's as part of a broader category strategy. That's not to say that, you know, I'm not interested in RPA or AI and what they can do for procurement. And absolutely, you know, those are the technologies of the very near future. For organizations who are already further along in their, what I'd say, their digital maturity, those are technologies of today. Um, But for most procurement organizations looking to take advantage of technology in 2019, I'd say those are kind of the two places to look. Now, I said those were a couple of specific opportunities, and there was one generic. So the generic one is really looking, uh, and this can be applied to any procurement technology that you already have, is just looking at options that provide for an easier user experience, whether that's things that you can do within the framework of the existing technology that you own or that you've already purchased, or whether that's by uh, bringing in a different provider. Um, I think that user experience is often overlooked in the technology selection process, and yet it really is critical in getting engagement. So, so many times you see companies have invested in the latest technologies that really would take them to another level. You know, the business case is there, but the challenge has been that um, the usability of the technology that's chosen meant that it's been really str- a struggle to get engagement and nobody's using it. So the second change I'm starting to see more in at the end of 2018 going into 2019 is a really positive one. And it's kind of a change in mindset. I see that we're challenging ourselves more on kind of 
to me, this is a really critical question. You know, what is procurement? So it's challenging a lot of our uh, assumptions or kind of where our, our journey has come from. You know, what have we done in the past? Is that what we're going to do? Is that what our value proposition is going to be going forward? It's only when we start to do that that we can start to recognize all the possibilities that exist for us as procurement professionals and kind of the view and the relationships that we get across our organizations and outside in the supply markets and kind of bringing all those together. I'm thrilled to hear us talk more broadly about our commercial responsibilities, you know, how we align with our business. The idea of customer centricity is something that I'm really passionate about. We've talked about it within the Catalisco platform over the past month or two. I've actually got an interview coming up early next year with a guest on that very topic. But there's so much more that we, that there's kind of a magic that happens when we really start to think of ourselves as more of, I'd say, customer centricity in two ways. One is more of a service provider, so looking at our stakeholders as a customer. And second is really understanding more about what the true end user of our organizational services, our products, what they need, what they want, or what they are lacking, because then we can help go out into supply markets and find and, and kind of fill in the gaps, if you will, find opportunities to um, to enhance the end customer experience by using what we have access to in supply markets. So I'm really kind of happy to hear that we're talking about that more and more. I'm also really encouraged to see um, that we're talking and embracing uh, uncertainty. So I think there's now a recognition that we don't necessarily know what we don't know. And and that seems simple. Um, But there's so much uncertainty for me around how emerging technologies will impact us. You know, what challenges are we going to face in 2019? A lot of uncertainty in the economy, a lot of uncertainty politically, certainly in the areas of the world that a lot of listeners are from, you know, in the US and the UK. Um, And we don't necessarily know how that's going to impact us. What's that going to mean for our jobs? What's that going to mean for our careers? There's lots of you know, ways that we can speculate on or project answers to those questions. And as we come towards the end of 2018, many more reports and articles, I'm sure, will continue to do that over the next couple of weeks. Um, but the positive here, coming back to the positive that I see, is that I'm, I, I'm, I guess I'm seeing more people who see this as an, uh, an opportunity to embrace, you know, that this uncertainty is something to embrace. The response now is, you know, how can I take advantage of this to create more value rather than how can I minimize the impact of this change and kind of retain the status quo? And I just see more and more in the, I want to take advantage of this change rather than I want to fear this change camp. That to me is really exciting because it ties back into what I said at the beginning of kind of challenging all those assumptions that we make and not fearing change Um, Because the one thing that's for sure is that change is going to happen. And so much of my career, I've seen people kind of put their head in the sand. And that was, as I've said before on the show, one of the motivators for changing the show is um, so that we can all kind of drive change, deliver change, do it with confidence, because we feel like we're not alone on that journey. So looking into 2019... Um, I am going to leave most of the projections, and there'll be many, I'm sure, over the next couple of weeks, as I just said. I'm going to leave those to uh, to other people. But I say the key word here is most of the projections. <laughs> I'm going to project a couple of things. Um, and maybe these aren't um, particularly new or um, overly insightful, but I just think that it, it's important to keep these at the front of our kind of thinking as we head into the new year. Uh, the first one is that the pace of technological change, it's going to continue to be faster than the pace of organizational change. Um, But because organizational change is slower, and that's nothing new, I don't think that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be ready to take advantage, as I was saying before, of that technological change. So let me give you some context on that. So every year um, that technological change is faster than organizational change to me means that the opportunities that exist within technology are farther ahead of where we are in terms of the reality of where we are organizationally. And so every year that that gap gets bigger, it increases the risk of kind of a big bang where all of a sudden there's some game-changing technology that perhaps we didn't even see or there's a product or service that's that's, uh, finally launched into the market that renders a lot of what we do obsolete. I do still think that that's a risk for us in procurement. Now, how much of a risk? It's enough of a risk where I think we should all focus on where we can grow and where we can add more value and, you know, how quickly can we do that? 
but not enough of a risk where I think 2019 is the year that all transactional and tactical procurement work is going to be replaced by bots. Second, I think that most procurement organizations will continue to struggle to drive sustained change, uh, drive it at scale. When I say sustained, what I mean is more than you know going in and taking advantage of some little hanging fruit and driving some changes, but implementing some structural change where procurement is able to make the difference over and above you know, the first negotiation, the first, uh, let's say, professional negotiation we've done on a category, you know, for five years. Something a little bit more than that. I think we're going to continue to struggle in our attempts, at least, again, at scale. Referencing scale, as I said before, it being across pretty much everything that we buy. You know, we'll continue to fight fires for stakeholders. I think we'll be fighting inertia in our attempts at driving change, uh, we'll always be engaged too late by stakeholders who then expect us to deliver a miracle. Um, you know, and it's always going to be hard to step back, be proactive, um, and to invest in the growth, to invest in the change that we want to see because we're always pressed for time. And, you know, what I see more and more is we're always really pressed as a procurement function for the discretionary budgets to really get the help to move that change forward where we need it. So we got those challenges uh, we got technology coming down the path. What can we do about it to make 2019 your year? Don't have all the answers. I never claim to have all the answers, but I have three different questions for you to think about as we head over the holidays. The first one is, you know, what's your plan? What are your goals for 2019? What will you plan to change? What is it? What's the change that you want to see? But also importantly, how are you going to measure your success? And, you know, other milestones along the way where you can track to see if you're being successful or not. So that's the first thing is at least have a plan. The second one is have a story. Um, And my question is, what is your story? So how will you get the budget you need? For example, assuming that you need budget to drive the change. How will you be able to bring on board internal advocates or advocates anywhere? It can be advocates within your family if it's a career change. How are you going to bring on board the advocates you need to partner with to have any chance on delivering on the change that you want to see? And then the third one is how will you deliver? You know, what are the steps that you will take? How are you going to prioritize? And how will you get the help you need to execute? So that's thinking about what's your plan? What's your story? And then how are you going to deliver? I've always said that we as procurement professionals, we're so well positioned to drive change and to measurably increase the impact that we all have, you know, on our careers, um, that impacts um, our happiness, and it also impacts, you know, the organizations that we work for, the impact that we have at work. If you've achieved everything you hoped for in 2018, I think now is the time to celebrate. Um, Then let's plan for an even more successful 2019 I want to leave today just with a final thought and leave the podcast for this year with a final thought. You know, we talked a lot in the early part of the year about making choices. The only thing that any one of us can control is our own choices. So in 2019, you know, we're going to be here with you at Atta Procurement every step of the way, help you make the choices, take the actions that you need to deliver the change that you want to see and to do it with confidence because I think that's really important. That gives us what it takes to actually make hard choices. I hope, with all that being said, that you have a wonderful holiday, a wonderful new year, um, that you get the chance you need to relax, to refresh and to recharge, and that you're going to be ready to go again in 2019. The Atta Procurement, as I said at the top of the show, is going to be back with our first interview on January the 7th. I may drop a short pod before then, just going behind the scenes on our plans at Art of Procurement for 2019. It's going to be a busy break for us and uh, pulling together a lot of new things. Um, But yeah, that's to be determined. So it might pop into your stream, it might not. Uh, We'll see how the holidays go, but we'll definitely be back with the first interview on January the 7th. So finally, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in over the course of 2018. I want you to stay safe and we'll talk again soon. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Art of Procurement. To find an archive of all past episodes, you can go to artofprocurement.com slash episodes. And to ensure you never miss another show, go to artofprocurement.com slash subscribe.